chosen generation. He calls you his own. Hallelujah. I'm walking in power. Working in miracle. Because he did it. Hallelujah. Are we ready to continue to praise? Yeah. Hallelujah. Ready when you are. Hey. I know. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. We know the song. Let's sing it together. We are a chosen gen. We are a chosen generation. Go for to show his excellence. All I require for life. All I require for life. God has given me. I know me. who I am. I know who I am. One more time. We are a chosen generation. We are a chosen generation. All I, all I require for all life, I need God, is God has given me. I know, hey, who I, know, I, know, I, know I know who God says I am. I know, I know what He says I am. I know, I know where He says I'm at. I know, who I, I, know I know, I know who God says I am. I know, I know what He says I am. What He says I am. Where He says I'm at. I know who I'm I walking in. Where is 
the Most High God. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Oh, clap your hand for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's alive this morning. He's no longer in the tomb. He's alive this morning. He's in sitting at the right side of the Father. And the sitting for each one of you this morning. Clap your hand for Jesus. Hallelujah. Our Redeemer. Hallelujah. Our Savior. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. serving a living God all the other gods that call their name God they're still in the tomb huh? but our God he's alive this morning he's no longer in the tomb give him praise hallelujah amen. amen oh glory to God amen amen thank you you may be seated we praise the name of the Lord this morning we are serving a great God this morning. I want you to know who you are this morning. The daughter of the Most High God, the King of Kings. Amen, amen. There is reason to celebrate. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. God bless you this morning. We welcome each and every one of you. We see a lot of faces. We, you are beautiful. We welcome you in the presence of the Lord this morning. And those of you that are visiting us the first time or the second time, um, a special welcome to you. Welcome in the house of the Lord. We praise the name of the Lord that you are choosing to worship the Lord with us this morning at Green Pastures Church. And also the one of those of you that are following online, Facebook, YouTube, we welcome you as well. Thank you for watching and celebrating the Lord with us this morning. And for those of you here, if it's your first time or second time, you can still please, at the end of the service, stop at the guest table and they will give you a connect card to fill out just to help us know you better. May God bless you. Amen. Now please turn your attention to the screen. We have a few announcements for you. Thank you. Amen. The sound is not too well. I don't think you hearing what they're saying. We can stop. Hallelujah. YouTube, Facebook, and the Here free conference call line. Our life groups. Join a life group today. We have adult French, adult English, young professionals, youth French, youth English, and Haitian Creole. Click the QR code, sign up today to connect with a life group leader. Calling all volunteers. GPC is in need of ministry workers. Connect with us today at the guest center and let us know how you would love to serve here with us in the ministry. Southern New England Women's Conference 2024, April 11th through the 13th. The theme this year, When You Pray. Registration is now closed, but for more information, if you'd like to commute, you can speak with Reverend Dr. Claire or Sister Shiree. Couples Night Out, April 28th. The couples will be having a night out together. Please see Minister Sandra Phileas or Minister Christel for more information. Good Friday services, March 29th. This will be broadcast at 7 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. Please join us virtually as we celebrate together this season. 
Today is our Palm Sunday, but also Know Your Church Sunday. Please stop by at the Guest Center to know more about GPC and what we do here. There will be life groups and ministry teams represented at the table. You can scan a QR code. Amen. 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 Now it's time to give. Are you happy? Giving time? Blessings time. Amen. So we are here this morning as we started Worship the Lord with our songs and our prayers and all. But now it's time to worship the Lord with our offering. We have several ways to give. If you're in the house, we, are, we have the QR codes on the screen or you can also give by envelopes. One usher can provide you with one. If you need, please raise your hand and they will provide you with an envelope for your offering or time. If you are online, you can also give and those information on how to give is right on your screen. Please take this opportunity to praise the Lord with your offering. Amen. 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 While you're getting your offering ready in 2 Corinthians verse, um, chapter 9, verse 7, it says, each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheer giver. When it says not under compulsion, give it, that means we're not forcing you to give, but you're giving out from your heart, from what the Lord has done for you. Hallelujah. In that reading, the Apostle Paul emphasized that giving is a matter of the heart. Our gifts must come from the heart voluntarily, not like someone is forcing you, like I said earlier, because when you think about all the goodness of the Lord, this morning we don't have enough money to pay God for the sacrifice of the cross. Amen? We cannot repay God for our redemption this morning, hallelujah, or our salvation, but we can praise him. We can praise him not only through our songs and prayers, but with our money this morning. We can praise the Lord with all of our resources, with a cheerful heart. So I invite you to come and give the Lord your best offering this morning. Whether it's your tithe or offering, find in your heart. Be happy and giving to the Lord what he gave you first. Amen? Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand up on our feet as we are about to give. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Let's all stand up. Hallelujah. As we're giving to the Lord, we're going to pray. Then we'll give our offering. Father God, we bless your name. We honor you this morning. Our words are not enough to say thank you. Thank you for all you have done in our life. Hallelujah. Thank you for the sacrifice of the cross. Hallelujah. You came and died just to save us. Hallelujah. Just to redeem us, we give you praise and glory this morning. What shall we render to you for all your goodness in our lives, in the lives of our family? Today we come and offering our offering. Hallelujah. Our money, what you gave to us. You gave us strength that we went to work. And this morning we come again and, come and say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for what you have given us. And we come and give it back to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We ask that you bless it. Every hand that's about to put in the offering, every hand that's about to give, we ask that you bless them this morning. May you multiply the offering for the advancement of your kingdom. Everyone that has a lack this morning, Father God, may you fill them with joy, not only with joy, but with money, Father God. When you pro may you provide with them. So next time they come, they'll have something to give. We bless you, Lord. We adore you. May your name be glorified. May your name be lifted up as we continue to praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We invite you, if you have an envelope, please, you can place it in those baskets right next to you. May God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you.
14, verse 6. Yeah, yeah. Jesus answered. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Whoa. No one comes to the Father except through me. Whoa. John 14, verse 6. John 14, verse 6. John 14, verse 6. Ah, uh, here we go. Good morning, everybody. I'm Nema. I'm going to be reading John chapter 20, verse 1 to 18. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciples started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stopped and looked in and saw that the linen wrappings laying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed that the linen wrappings laying there while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head had folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for until they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb crying, and she wept. She stood and looked in. She saw the two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other on the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. P 
He says, they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Rabbanai, don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go find my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. Then she gave them his message. Amen. Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. Amen. Now we invite everybody in the room to stand up and let's worship the Lord together as a family.
I don't know if you understand the words of this song. Hallelujah. Death could not hold our king. Could not keep him captive in the tomb. Hallelujah. On the third day, the Bible says, he rose from the dead. And you and I have hope for an everlasting life because he won at the cross. Come on, put your hands together and bless the Lord. Come on, glorify the King of Kings. Give him praise because he is a good God. Glorify him because you are saved by grace. It is by the grace of God. It is by the power of God. It's by the power of resurrection that we have life eternal. My God, you are worthy. My Jesus, I lift you up. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the King of Kings. Glory to the Almighty God. Glory to the winner of Golgotha. Glory to the one who speaks a word up and it comes to pass up. Word glory to the resurrection and life. Up. Glory to the one up who silenced the tomb up and all that it contained. Up. Glory to the King of Kings up before whom every knee shall bow up. in heaven, on earth, and beneath. Up. The King of Glory, He is risen. Up. He is alive. Up. And because He lives, up, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, up, my tomorrow is secured. Up. Because He lives. Yeah, that way. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We have to activate the power of His resurrection. Oh, I'm going to say this again. You have to activate the power of his resurrection. Resurrection comes with benefits. And it is not for the chairs. It's not for the other people. It is for you and I. He rose that you can have life. He rose again so you can live a better life. He rose from the dead so you can experience the grace of God. He rose from the dead so you can be delivered. He rose from the dead so you can be healed. He rose from the dead so you can have hope. Do I have a couple of people who want to activate the power of resurrection and say if my God did not rise again I don't know where I will be at this time for, for the next few minutes just start claiming the benefits of resurrection maybe you are claiming life you are claiming resurrection power you are speaking healing you are speaking salvation you are speaking guidance because he rose again you are walking out of depression you are walking out of issues because he rose again there is hope that your tomorrow is better come on lift up your voice up and start claiming the power of resurrection my God I claim resurrection and life in my life in my home in my family and in the church in the name of Jesus we speak life let everything that was crooked be made whole everything that was broken my God be made everything that went Hallelujah, wrong, be brought back into alignment in the name of Jesus. I speak resurrection power in my mind, in my spirit, in my soul, and in my body. I speak healing in my mental, I speak healing in my spirit, I speak healing in my body, I speak healing in the house, I speak comfort in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree that every plan and plot of the enemy every attack of the devil is defeated because there is resurrection power in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus yes Lord we bless your name we bless your name we bless your name we bless your name the Bible says, in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord. We proclaim the Lordship of Jesus in this place. 
We proclaim the Lordship of Jesus over our hearts and minds. We proclaim the Lordship of Jesus over everything that concerns us. In the name of Jesus, we proclaim the Lordship of Jesus over every confusion of the enemy, every doubt, every hesitation, every misunderstanding of the power of the cross, everything fighting your knowledge and the power of resurrection in your life. We war against every lie of the enemy and we establish the truth truth um, and let the truth set you free and the power of resurrection uh, be activated in your life in Jesus mighty name in Jesus name we bless your name because you are present in our midst oh God in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah Hallelujah. We bless your name. Maybe before you take your seat, you're going to read the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord. His presence is in this place. And we just honor God. Hallelujah. We honor God. I'm just going to read one passage in John chapter 11 verse 25. We have had a reading of the word in length on the meaning of today's celebration. Hallelujah. So we praise the King of Kings. We praise the Lord of Lords. We acknowledge his presence in our midst. Hallelujah. Uh, we need more than one sermon to speak of all that concerns the resurrection. We are alive because he is alive. Oh, hallelujah. We have hope for a better tomorrow because he is alive. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. John chapter 11, verse 25. And I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Jesus said to her, I'm going to read then. I'm going to tell you their context. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes, the Amplified Version say, adheres and trusts and relies on me as Savior will live even if he dies. Let's all take our seats. Hallelujah. Our time is fast spent. I thank God because today we started with a branch. It was a good way to connect both services. The people from our first service came out of service at 1030. Then we prepared a meal and hopefully you got a chance for at least for those who showed up on time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we started our second service a little bit later to give you time to fellowship with our brethren from our first service because we sometimes get a chance, don't get a chance to meet and mingle. Hallelujah. We are one church. Hallelujah. One church. We praise God. So I'm just going to share very briefly the word of God and I'm not going to be in before you too long. I just want to make sure that we share briefly this word because the Lord is doing something great in our midst in this season. And what a fitting time to even mention these things. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that God, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. I want to tell you that we are putting our faith in a God of our salvation in a God who did more than anybody will ever do for us. We trust in Jesus Christ and we just love him and we put our faith in him because he is God over our lives. Hallelujah. He is God over our lives. He loved us to the point of accepting to be beaten, sacrificed on the cross. But the celebration is he did not stay in the tomb. Hallelujah. He did not stay in the tomb. But he rose from the dead. If there's a couple of people who need, uh, maybe they need translation in English, please uh, let's help them. We can either bring them to our line and translate over their phone or somebody can sit next to them. But let's just make sure that everybody hears the word of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
The Bible says that and, and, and I'm, I'm going maybe to, to go back to a few things we shared on Friday to introduce the very few words that the Lord has placed into my heart to share with you today. Hallelujah. On Friday, on Good Friday service, we, we shared the word of God. We had a discussion in depth on certain reality of uh, the uh, crucifixion of Jesus Christ, the power of the cross, the messages of the cross. And among them, I was telling people of God, the agony of Jesus started even in the garden of Gethsemane where he, in prayer, he faces the reality, hallelujah, that he was going to be sacrificed for the pains and the hurt of humanity, hallelujah. The Bible tells us that he took time to go on Gethsemane and he was praying. The Bible said that he was uh, such in an intense moment uh, that literally the sweat on his uh, uh, face, on his forehead, uh, was literally blooding, bloody. It means that he was under such pressure. There was a level of stress that kind of burst uh, certain uh, uh, nerves uh, or vessels uh, in our bodies. The level of stress that causes somebody to literally sweat blood somehow. And I don't have time to uh, 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 medically explain these things, but we, our God was under pressure and the pressure was not because he was bad, he was perfect. Uh, hallelujah. He was God uh, and he is still God. Uh, the pressure was because he was carrying our weight. Uh, he was carrying our pains. Uh, he was carrying our curses. Uh, he was carrying our limitations. Uh, he was carrying on him. Hallelujah. Every weight of sin uh, and he, he was, uh, because God is holy, I'm sure at this time, uh, he starts suffering even the separation because uh, there is no way a holy God can inhabit, hallelujah, a place of sin. His cry on Gethsemane was not for him, it was for you and I. His pain, even in his attempt to say God if you can take away this cup nevertheless hallelujah let your will be done what is he saying it is hard it is difficult I cannot bear it as a human being but you know what because of you he was willing to sacrifice because of you and I he was willing to, to, to go through it so that you and I can receive eternal life God had you in mind in Gethsemane. The Lord had you in mind. He said, God, if it was just possible to take away this uh, 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 cup, but nevertheless, let your will be done. Because the will of God was the salvation of humanity. The will of God is that I do not have eternal damnation, but eternal life. The will of God needed to be fulfilled. Somebody said, even if you were the only human and God needed your salvation, he would have still sent his only begotten son. What a sacrifice on the cross while he is being beaten. He is crucified in the agony of the pain. Hallelujah. Still with you in mind, he says it is finished. That means the price has been paid. That means the sacrifice has been made. That means whatever I came for, I have fulfilled it. I took the sin and nailed it. I took the sicknesses and disease Jesus uh, and I nailed it uh, I took the pains and the shames uh, and I nailed it uh, I took the hurt uh, and I nailed it uh, I took the setbacks uh, and I nailed it uh, I took the infirmities uh, and I nailed it uh, I took the, uh, the, 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 the power of darkness that were holding them down uh, and I nailed them uh, the Bible says in Colossians uh, he made a public spectacle of the enemy whoever was trying uh, to hold you down in secret. Uh, God brought them publicly uh, and put them to shame. Uh, whatever thing will try to intimidate your life. Uh, the Bible says uh, he did not do it in secret. Uh, I want to tell somebody maybe you have been crying in secret uh, but your victory will be public uh, so that everybody will know that you are a child uh, of the living God. Oh hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. The Bible says he made a, a spectacle of the enemy. The devil is a liar. Nowadays, uh, there's all kinds of intimidation, uh, all kind of doubt, uh, all kind of things working our minds. Uh, a lot of people hiding in their rooms, uh, hiding in their own minds, uh, maybe don't know how to get themselves uh, out of the troubles, the pain, the hurt they're going through. But let me tell you, you have cried in the dark, uh, but God will give you victory in the light. Uh, everybody around you will know that the God that we serve uh, is a powerful God. Uh, what a powerful name uh, we have in Jesus. Uh, because at the mention of his name, uh, every knee shall bow uh, and every tongue confess uh, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hey, yaba sheke yaba. The Lord says uh, that the world will know. Hallelujah. Mary and Martha, just like you and I, they are going through a tremendous pressure. Their beloved brother, Lazarus, is dead. They're experiencing the shadow of death so close to them. They're experiencing pain. They're experiencing hurt. I am sure they're wondering Lazarus knows the Lord. Nazareth is a friend of Jesus. And we sent a word to let them to let him know that Lazarus was uh, sick and Jesus did not show up. And then they sent a word a few days later that Lazarus is dead. I am telling you the context of the word we just read in John chapter 11 and 25. Lazarus is completely dead. And it has not been one day or two days. It has been four days since he was buried. It is known biologically that from the fourth day already, the body started decaying. So if there was a chance that some organs were still viable maybe it was the first day when the body just cold, got cold. Maybe on the second day it is not totally gone but there is a chance that something can be restored. But Jesus Christ made sure that everything human me possible becomes absolutely impossible. The Bible says he showed up up on the fourth day and he asked the sister do you believe do you think oh hallelujah he speaks to them and said there is nothing impossible to those who believe do you believe your brother can live and the sister goes yes lord he will live at the resurrection of at the end of time jesus said no 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 i am the resurrection and life and I am here right now. I am not talking about the end of times. I am telling somebody, maybe you are waiting for your blessing, your breakthrough, your peace, your joy to come some other time. The resurrection of life says, I am present now. Whenever I show up, you don't have to wait for tomorrow. Life comes on today. Resurrection is today. And the Bible says that he raised Lazarus from the dead. I just want to tell somebody uh, when the power of resurrection shows up uh, nothing dead can remain dead uh, he brings it back to life uh, I don't know about you uh, but I need this Jesus uh, to bring some dreams back to life uh, to bring some parts of my body back to life uh, to bring my circumstances back to life uh, I don't know what God you believe in but the one I believe in he says I am the resurrection Resurrection. I am the life. Do you need resurrection? Hold on to Jesus. You need life. Hold on to Jesus. Because he says, I am. Oh, hallelujah. Our time is gone. We got to start closing here. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. In all the versions, at least the correct ones of the Bible, they put the article, the. That means there is no other. 
but him. Oh, hallelujah. There is no life in other, but in him. There is no true resurrection, but in him. Are you understanding? Ah, people can fabricate things. They can make things almost look like, but the truth is him and him alone. True resurrection is in the God of our salvation. And the Bible says, whom the son sets free is free indeed. We have no victory, no freedom, no deliverance in no other, but in him, the resurrection and life. In him, the resurrection and life. Some of us need to live again. Some of us uh, need to come alive. Some of us uh, need to be resurrected in our heart and mind. Uh, some of us need to find a sense of purpose. Uh, God is life. Uh, his life is eternal. And his life is full. Hallelujah. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. He says, I am the resurrection and life. And say, the one who believes, who adheres to this truth. Who relies on me. The one who trusts in me. As a savior. The amplified version adds. He will live. Even if he dies. Oh hallelujah. I don't know what people have tried to do to you. I don't know what life has tried to do to you. I don't know what got into you. I don't know what has tried to discourage you. I just want to give you something. There is hope in Jesus. He says, even if you die, you will live. Oh, some of you will get this tomorrow morning. He says, even if you die, you will live. Even if Lazarus was dead, he will live because Jesus showed up. Oh, I don't know if somebody's understanding. All I need is just that the resurrection on life uh, will show up in my life. All I need uh, is that the resurrection on life and life uh, will show up in my circumstances. Uh, all I need is that the resurrection on life uh, will show up in my chaos. Uh, I don't know who's criticizing what look my life look now, like right now. Maybe I'm in the chaos according to people. Maybe I'm being misunderstood. Uh, it is all right. Uh, all I need it is not your comment it is not your pity it is not your even your first counsel all I need is that the resurrection and life shows up because when Jesus shows up everything changes a price needed to be paid he is the price hallelujah for who I was and for who I needed to become, there was a price to pay. Ah, Jesus could have brought gold and silver from the heavenly places, positions and accolades and pay to get the enemy to back off. You know, he could have bribed the devil to get him to back off your life so you can have life. But he did not just want the enemy to back off. He wanted you to have eternal life. So he accepted to be the price himself. What a sacrifice. Just imagine you are being arrested because you did this and then somebody shows up and say, leave him alone, take me. Oh, my God. Oh, I, I don't know if you're understanding. When Jesus at the cross says, it is finished, it is paid off. It is finished. The Greek word that summarizes that phrase, it is finished, it is tetelestai. Tetelestai means paid in full. It's like a stamp says paid in full. When somebody was uh, convicted of a crime and they had to go to prison, let's say they say you're going to be in prison for 15 years. On the 15th year, on the day planned, the person, they give them back their uh, baggy clothes because now they're skinny after they've been in prison. They give them a paper to say, you have served your sentence. It is finished with you. You are free from now on. You don't own uh, nothing. In, the, in, in Hebrew, we'll say, tetelestai. That means you've served your sentence and you can go free. 
What Jesus did for us was that he showed up and he paid the price on our behalf. Instead of maybe 15 years sentence for us, he went into that prison and he set you free immediately. Isn't he a good God? Isn't he a wonderful God? Tetelestai means debt paid in full. For some who have a mortgage, just imagine, ah, uh, by miraculous, I am claiming that in Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Somebody that shows up uh, with I don't know how many thousands of dollars uh, and go to your bank and on your behalf, uh, they go ahead and pay the bank that $500,000 you owe. And then the bank calls you and say, come and take your deed uh, and the title to your house uh, because you there is no more need for us to hold. You know, when you have a mortgage, we celebrate God that we have a house. But actually, the house belongs to the bank. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us when it is tetelest tied, that means the bank comes with a certificate of ownership. Now, it's no longer in the name of the bank. It is in your name. They give you a title. And it is tetelest tied. That means you owe nothing. The house is all yours. People of God, that's what Jesus said. You bought Borrowed life, the devil squeezed it here and here, there. And tetelest time means God says, I give back your life and you owe nothing to the devil. Your sins of the past are forgiven. You owe them nothing. It doesn't matter if you were born in a family of witches that are holding your life down. Tetelest time means I pay the price and those witches cannot even find your name anymore. Tetelest time means you are free to go and you owe nothing thing to nobody. I speak tetelestai in somebody's life. Hallelujah. Be free in Jesus name. Be free to live. Be free to love. Be free to succeed. Be free to move forward. Be free in Jesus name. Because he rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Even if you die, you will live. I just want to conclude by saying it doesn't matter what looked so impossible into your life. I'm going to say it very quietly without getting excited because I feel the fire in my belly. Praise the Lord. Thank God I have a belt today to withhold me. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. But I want to tell somebody that it does not matter where you are right now. It does not matter where you have been. It does not matter what happened yesterday. It does not matter what it looks like right now. What it sounds like right now. What it the word on the street. Uh, we are free in Jesus name. Uh, he rose from the dead. Uh, he won over sin. Uh, he won over death. Uh, and today we live uh, and we have hope of a better tomorrow because he lives. Uh, and I love the song that says uh, because he lives uh, I can face tomorrow whatever threatened you yesterday uh, no longer has power over you. Whatever limited you yesterday uh, no longer have power over you. Uh, social media has no power over me. People's opinion have no power over me. Even the diagnostic of the doctor has no power over my mind. Uh, I am free and free indeed. Uh, and I celebrate Jesus uh, because he said Tetelestai, uh, it is finished. Uh, you can walk free and the death uh, that he died uh, was for my resurrection uh, on the third day the Bible says uh, hallelujah he came out of the tomb uh, and the ladies were looking for him in the tomb they say why are you looking among the dead uh, one who is alive uh, I'm telling somebody today uh, don't look any further Jesus Christ is alive uh, don't search any further Jesus Christ is alive and because he lives we will face tomorrow with courage with audacity with faith come on lift up your voice and stand up and praise the Lord and praise the King of Kings in your own words bless the Lord bless the Lord oh my soul and everything within me bless his holy name and do not forget the benefits of resurrection in Jesus Jesus name because he lives I can face tomorrow all my fears are gone because he lives I am not scared 
of what will happen in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Because he lives. All fear is gone. And now I know. Is the teeth of our hope but because he lives we can face tomorrow the Lord wipes tears away he wipes shame away he wipes hurts away he wipes insecurities away he wipes issues away because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone. All fear is gone. Because I know. name of Jesus because the power because of the power of resurrection one who thought that life was not worth living one who my God walked in fear walked in insecurity in the unknown one who was wondering father I pray that you embrace father will draw them closer to you and they will experience the power of resurrection the hope of a better life my God a life of purpose in Jesus name one who had received so many bad news whose faith was shaken my God activate the power of resurrection and help them know my God even if uh, something looks like it's dead that uh, you can bring it back to life uh, there is nobody no issue no problem you cannot solve so we pray Lord uh, activate the power of resurrection uh, in the mighty name uh, of Jesus Christ heal hearts heal minds heal thoughts give courage determination my god appetite for a better life resilience supernatural strength divine ability joy unspeakable peace in the middle of a storm my god we pray and believe that there is absolutely nothing impossible to you and your word will never go void without you fulfilling what for which it was sent my god let your word today fertilize somebody's body and give birth to hope to joy to resilience and to miracles in jesus name in the name of Jesus. Let those who've been hurting receive res restoration and healing. Those who felt alone receive the embrace of God. My God, those whose faith was shaken, whose belief was tried, draw them back closer to you, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Now we speak healing. We speak healing to all our beloved in our midst and extended families father who are suffering one way or another at the cross you took the sickness and disease and when you rose to life they rose to health in jesus name so we speak health in jesus name we speak health in the name of jesus we speak miracles in the name of jesus those were buried under the pressure of life. When you rose again, they rose to restoration. They rose to peace. So we speak peace. We speak provision. We speak the grace of God. The grace to overcome. In Jesus' mighty name. 
my God, those who were under the pressure and the attacks of the enemy, when you rose from the dead, they rose in victory, they rose in triumph. So we speak victory, we speak deliverance in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. We pray for the month of April. Come on, somebody, in your own words, speak grace in your mouth of whatever you want to see, whatever miracle you want for the month of April, speak it in Jesus' name. Say the devil will not fool you, not even on 1st of April. Declare that I am beautiful, I am great, I am capable, I am healed, I am righteous. I love Jesus and he loves me more. Come on, speak it into your life. Whatever project you are working on at work, in life, in your business, in a relationship, just say, God, I speak victory, I speak guidance, I speak speak clarity of mind I speak clarity of decisions in Jesus name speak into your mouth and declare it is a mouth full of good news good health good relationships hallelujah hallelujah I speak into April and I declare that every plan of the enemy is vetoed right now and destroyed in Jesus mighty name arise in victory let April be a month of victory in every area of our lives in Jesus name in Jesus name may the grace of our Lord Jesus the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever in Jesus mighty name we have prayed and the people of God say Amen. Amen. Can, can we sing the blessing? Can we sing the blessing? Hallelujah. God bless you. We love you dearly. We always pray for you. Give somebody a high five and tell them Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Have a great week. <laughs>